Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran. For those watching online, we are very glad that you have joined us. On Good Friday, we heard the message how we preach Christ crucified. Important message, but on Easter, we celebrate the resurrection. Uh, Christ is risen. the most significant event in human history. <clears throat> People may not believe it, but it doesn't change the fact that if Jesus Christ had not risen from the dead, none of you would be here today. I thank God for that victory that he won for us, <clears throat> and may that victory touch our hearts in a new way this morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Would you, amen, would you please rise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Lord's right arm is raised in triumph. The Lord's right arm has done marvelous things. We will not die. Instead, we will live to tell what the Lord has done. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. He, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's do that again. Christ is risen.
Forgive me, Lord, when I am so eager to get, but so reluctant to give, so ready to receive your gifts, but so unwilling to bear the cross. Who will rescue? Forgive me, merciful Father, when I avoid making any commitment to you, when I doubt that you really see my sin, when I disobey your commandments and am satisfied with only living for myself. Who Forgive me, Lord, when I am quick to find fault, but resentful when someone points out my faults. When I am so soon at play, but so late in prayer. Father, forgive me when I rejoice in the temporary, but think little of the eternal. When I am so fond of being idle, but show little passion for helpful service. Who will rescue you and me from this body of death? Thanks be to God. He delivers us through Jesus Christ. By the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, a called and ordained servant of the word, remind you that you are forgiven of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is the day the Lord has made. Please take a moment and share the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with those who are around you. Our Old Testament reading this morning is from Exodus 15, 1 through 18. During the entire season of Lent, we have been following a sermon series through the book of Exodus as we are reminded of how God delivered the Egyptians from their bondage. He also delivers us from our bondage to sin and death. And we conclude that series with this reading from Exodus 15, 1 through 18. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, 
You threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger, and it consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood firm like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? You stretched out your right hand and the earth swallowed them. In your unfailing love, you will lead the people you have redeemed. In your strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. The nations will hear and tremble. Anguish will grip the people of Philistia. The chief of Edom will be terrified. The leaders of Moab will be seized with trembling. The people of Canaan will melt away. Terror and dread will fall upon them. By the power of your arm, they will be as a stone until your people pass by, O Lord, until the people you brought pass by. You will bring them in and plant them on the mountain of your inheritance. The place, O Lord, you made for your dwelling. The sanctuary, O Lord, your hands established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 58. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. I would love to invite all the kids up front for the children's message. Come on up. Hello. Come on over. Come have a seat. Hi, sweet girl. Hi. You with brother? All right. Well, 
Guess what? Sorry about that. Happy Easter, everyone. It's Easter, right? Yeah, is it Easter? It is. It, we are celebrating Easter today. Have you ever thought that an egg can tell us about God's love? Have you ever thought that? Yeah. You have? <laughs> all right, all right. Well, uh, I brought my egg basket with me today. How do you think I got these eggs? Store. No, not a store. No. I went to an... Are there pictures up there? Easter egg hunt? I went to an Easter egg hunt. That's right. Now, uh, you find the eggs, right? And then you get to put them in your basket, right? And do you know um, what the Bible tells us? The Bible tells us that uh, God sent his son into this world to find us. I think there's a Bible passage. Oh, what does it say? For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. Who is the son of man? Jesus. That's right. Who's lost? You're the lost ones. We're the lost ones. Do you ever feel lost? Oh, sometimes we get lost in our sin, right? You know, um, you get lost in your dreams and video games. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> you know what? I went on an egg hunt not long ago, and we lost the last egg. And we all had to stop what we were doing, and we had to go search for that egg. Do you think we found it? No. We did. We found the egg. I was so happy. Is it the golden one? I don't know. Let's see. You know what? Uh, reminds me of a story that Jesus told us, and it was about the good shepherd. Now, the good shepherd had a bunch of sheep, and he lost one. And he left the 99 other ones behind, right, to go and find the one sheep, right, that was lost. And he found the sheep. And when he did, he picked it up. He put the sheep around his neck. He went back home with the sheep. And he said, hey, let's celebrate. I found what was lost. He was so excited. Do you know what? God loves us even more than that. So much that he would send his son Jesus into this world to find us, to love us, to forgive us. Now, I have this egg here. Um, these have different things in them. What do you think is in this egg? Toys or candy to annoy your parents. A truck? Skittles? Any, anyone Skittles? I like Skittles. All right, ready? It is empty. Now, here's the thing about this empty egg. It kind of reminds me of my sins. Because when I sin and I disobey God, I feel very empty inside. I do not feel sweet like Skittles at all. I feel very sad, right? It's kind of sour. Skittles are sour. Now, the other thing is this. That empty egg reminds me, when I think about my sins, I think I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven from my sins because the grave was empty on that first Easter morning. Jesus had risen from the grave. He is alive. He did not stay dead. He battled sin, death, and the devil on our behalf, and he won victory for Jesus which means we can be with him in heaven one day. You know, I like to think of it this way, boys and girls. I like to think of it as first Jesus finds us, right? He finds us wherever we are, however we are. He knows where we are. Then he forgives us from our sins, right? And then he fills us with his love, right? And then we're part of his... Do you see some notes behind me? He, yes, he makes us part of his forever family. We get to live with him forever and ever and ever. And that is awesome news, right? Maybe when you have your eggs, you can tell someone these things about what Jesus does for us in our lives. That's his story. Yes, ma'am. The flowers are lovely and they make it beautiful. All right, we're going to go to God in prayer right now. And I have an egg for each of you. You may only open it after your parents or grandparents say so, okay? So let's go ahead and go to God in prayer, and you can repeat after me. Ready? 
Yeah, yes, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Here we go. Dear God, dear God, thank you for finding us. Thank you for finding us and loving us and loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for forgiving us and filling us and filling us with your love, with your love. And thank you for making us, thank you for making us a part of your forever family, a part of your forever family. Help us share your wonderful story. Help us share your wonderful story with others, with others. Alleluia and amen. Alleluia and amen. All right, well, here is an egg for each of you. Don't worry about that. No, you can have one. Come on up. Would you please rise for the reading of our gospel, if you are able? For many of us, we have probably heard this story many times, but I encourage you this morning, listen to the story as though you have never heard it before. John 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. 
Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated.
Amen. Good morning, church. It is good to be in the presence of the Holy One today. And um, today I want to ask you to think with me a little bit about this question. What are the odds? What are the odds? You know, this week in New Jersey, somebody purchased a lottery ticket for the Mega Millions, and they produced a $1.13 billion jackpot. What are the odds? They were 327 million to one. 327 million to one. What are the odds that if you're a high school baseball player, you're going to make it to the big leagues? 6,700 to one. What are the odds that if I give you my, my debit card, you can go and punch up the right four digit pin number one to 7,000? What are the odds of you getting struck by lightning? One in three million. But I want to show you a guy who defied all the odds. His name is Roy Sullivan. Roy Sullivan has been struck a world record number seven times by lightning (laughs) and lived to tell about it. Roy worked as a park ranger in the state of Virginia and three times was up in a watchtower and got hit by lightning. Now, the odds of that are astronomical, but it happened. I have a more important question for you today. What are the odds that a Jewish teacher, a rabbi, would be beaten, stricken, smitten, afflicted, crucified? What are the odds that he would rise from the dead? Inconceivable. Beyond what we could ever process, the odds are so astronomical, never been done, but it happened. What are the odds? You know, There's a lot of, throughout the New Testament, there are 11 times where it's recorded that Jesus actually appeared to people after he had been placed into the grave. 11 times. You know why people believe Roy Sullivan's story of being hit seven times by lightning? Because there were witnesses and because of his testimony. We have witnesses up the wazoo that Jesus was risen from the dead. In um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm sorry, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, first he appeared to Peter, then to the 12, then he appeared to James, and then all the apostles, and then he appeared to more than 500 is what the text says. And he, said, he says, and they're mostly alive, and you know what he's saying there? Go talk to them. Those people who saw Jesus are still alive, even though it was 30 or 40 years after the fact, they were still alive. Go ask them. Did you see this guy really raised from the dead? Was it true? And the answer they were giving was yes. It's beyond belief. It could only happen with miraculous intervention. And so here's what I'm hoping we get out of this message today. Number one, that you profess Easter. That the historic fact that Jesus has risen from the dead sinks deep into your heart and mind. But second and more importantly is this, that you possess Easter. Not just profess the facts of Easter, but that you possess Easter, and Easter comes to live and dwell in you. So we're going to talk about that, and to get into that today, we're going to go back to Egypt 3,500 years ago. Now you might remember, as Pastor Steve kind of set us up, that there was this group of people, they had gone down almost 4,000 years ago under the leadership of a guy named Joseph, and Joseph, God had given him some miraculous insights Pharaoh had some dreams. Nobody could figure it out. Joseph figured it out. There were these seven fat cows, and they got swallowed up by seven skinny cows. And Joseph said, hey, that means we're going to have seven really good years and then seven bad years. And so during those seven good years, we're going to store up all kinds of grain so that during the seven bad years, we can make it. And that happened. And everybody knew the name of Joseph. But some 400 years later, the Israelites were still down there in Egypt, and they had become enslaved. Let me ask you this. What are the odds? What are the odds that God's people, the Israelites, are going to be able to defeat the most powerful army on the earth at that time? What are the odds? Astronomical. What are the odds? People who were enslaved, so they put slave masters over them, and they used forced labor, and they made them build with bricks and straw out out of mud and straw. And then, not only that, it got worse. It was bad. 
You're a slave, it's bad, but it got worse. They're no longer to supply you with bricks or the straw to make bricks. Make them go gather their own, but require them to put out the same amount. He upped the ante. Things got worse. But then, even after these plagues came and Pharaoh had said, get out of my sight, then he changed his mind and he chased them. He chased them all the way to the Red Sea. And here the people of God are like, why in the heck, Moses, did you bring us out here to die? We're about to die. Things went from bad to worse to yet even worse. It took a miraculous intervention. What are the odds that God would miraculously intervene? But he did. They had slim and none odds. But God does something. He shows up. He intervenes. He tells Moses, take your staff, hit the rock, the water's going to part. Amazing. And they walked through. And we, Pastor Steve read the song that they sang as they passed through that Red Sea. And as they were getting through, then God, with a breath, makes the water to come back on Pharaoh and his army. And they all perished. But God's people sang this victory song. God's people sang, the Lord is my strength. He is my salvation. Yahweh, God, is a man of war. In other words, he's taking names and kicking booty on these people. That's what he was doing. And they couldn't believe it. They thought they were up against it with slim and no chance of having success. But they did. Because God is good. Jesus had a similar story. Jesus was up against it. The people of his day didn't like it. That he said, now, you know, most people today, if you ask him, who was Jesus? They'd say, oh, he was a guy who came and he had good teaching. He was a good moral teacher. But that's not at all what Jesus was. Jesus claimed that he was God in the flesh. The creator of the universe become incarnate. And you know what the religious people of that day did? They got mad about it. The Pharisees and the scribes, they'd test him on the scriptures, but he would come back with full answers and he would explain things in such a way that it had power and authority. They even called him demon-possessed. And they were so angry with him that they yell out, crucify him, crucify him. What were the odds that this guy was going to raise from the dead? It appeared like slim and none. What are the odds that a Jewish rabbi was going to become, as Pastor Steve said, the center point of all of human history? The guy that our calendars are really built off of. Who would think such a thing could happen? Nobody, really. But when God shows up, and when things go from bad to worse to worse yet, God announces a victory. The angels declare it. Mary cries out, Rabbi, teacher, oh, and she falls down and she worships. The disciples confirm it as they're walking along the road to Emmaus. They're like, this guy, he's got words and it's got power. And then they broke bread and all of a sudden, boom, their eyes were open. And they get it. The Lord was risen. It was a whole new thing. Even Thomas, doubting Thomas, and maybe there's some doubting Thomases in the room today. I don't know if this is all true. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Because a life with Jesus will change your life. So here's the question. Can you profess the message? To, con to, uh, to profess the message, I mean, is just to, to acknowledge, oh yeah, Jesus rose from the dead, that's part of the Christian story. But to, to move beyond that, to actually possess it. See, a lot of times I think there are barriers in people's way that they think, oh, I can't, I can't have hope. I can't look forward. And they get stuck on things like this. Well, my, my family, my situation just doesn't really work out for me. And people walk through life like zombies. And they're just kind of putting in time. Sometimes there's odds that were against them. Like a third to half of all marriages end in divorce. My parents had a struggle, so therefore I can't trust people. Therefore, the world is not good. Oh, I can't do that. Or sometimes... You grew up in a house where the, the drink was a little bit more than it should have been, and one in seven, that's the odds, one in seven households has had an alcoholic in their family. One of the really sad things is that one in four teenage girls has been abused. It's terrible. Odds are stacked against them. 
Maybe you had an absentee dad or a control freak mom or parents that screamed all the time, and you say, that's the reason that I can't put my hope and trust in this God, because God wouldn't allow those things. But think about it for a second. God allowed His Son to go to the cross. His Son. I think I've told this story before, but I was on an Uber ride from the airport to my house, and traffic was really bad, and it took us most of an hour to get there. And this particular gentleman um, was Islamic. And we got to the, to the real core of the issue. And I said, God loved us so much that he would send his one and only son to die for us. And he said, oh, my God loved his son so much that he would never let his son be hurt that he would never allow a hair on his head to be touched. See the difference? There's a God who would die to make it right with you so that you can have what he has, and that's eternity in paradise with you. He would die for that. That's how much he loves you. Rarely would someone die for even a good man, but for us, wretched sinners in this room, he has died. Some people pile on top of that, you know, I've experienced a devastating loss. Maybe it was a loss of a parent or a child or a spouse or a dream or a job. And they kind of trail off. And they have these little mini deaths that go along and they kind of get discouraged and their life seems overwhelming. They've been devastated by loss. That's for Easter is for to bring you hope and a renewal that God can do things even in the midst of loss. We're not minimizing it. We're just saying God can overcome this. Those are real. Those things are real. My family didn't work. I've experienced a devastating loss. It's real, but it doesn't define you. There is a God whose resurrection defines you more than that. Sometimes people spiral down and they've had families that don't work and they've had these devastating losses and it goes from bad to work and then worse and then they build into their lives these destructive habits. Turn to the bottle a little bit too much, or gambling or porn or overspending to try and think that if I just get enough stuff I'm going to feel good about myself or I have to have the right income or the right job or the right kind of car or the right whatever and then I'm going to be okay. There's never a payoff in any of that. Or I have to prove myself and be always on and always performing. It never ends. It's a treadmill. Rest in Him today. I want to tell you a story. It's a true story. It happened about, I don't know, 20, maybe 25 years ago. The gentleman's name was Lee Caps, And Lee was out with a friend of his in their Cessna 206 float plane. They took off from a little airport just outside of Seattle. And Lee did not know how to fly, but his friend who did was in the pilot seat. And then his friend, 16 minutes into the flight, had a heart attack. And so Lee gets a May Day to the airport, to the controller, and he says, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, my buddy just died. And um, so a calming voice comes on and says, Lee, it's your lucky day. I'm not only your air traffic controller, but I'm also a flight instructor. Are you interested in a flying lesson? <laughs> uh, yes, sir, please, why not? <laughs> the tower then says, Lee, um, you're going to get one shot at this. There's no spring training. There's no practice. There's no dress rehearsal. You got one shot. So listen carefully. So Lee flies in like a drunken duck. First time just overshoots it, can't land it. Second time comes in, hits hard on the water and skips up onto the runway. The pontoons bust. The plane is a trash, but Lee only has minor scratches. Afterwards, a TV reporter showed up and asked the air traffic controller, he said this, did you think that that man would walk away alive? He said this, folks, Lee Caps made it against all odds. You know, there's a lot of people trying to tell you right now, um, a lot of messages 
that Christianity thing, don't, don't mess with that. I'm here to tell you something different. There is a pilot who wants to bring you in and help you land the plane. His name is Jesus. And by the very power of His Spirit, He's enlivening you today to trust this message that He is risen. Beautiful. You guys are good. You know, there is a, uh, there's a verse at the very start of our service today. I want you to look back to the front of your bulletin. And it's about the third or fourth in the litany that's down, and it was the pastor's line, and it says this, the Lord's right arm is raised in triumph. I love that. Probably most of you in the room, at least I know I was locked in when the Rangers went to the World Series last year. Remember game one? It, we're down by one in the ninth inning, and Corey Seager comes up to bat, and he cranks a homer, and you just went, yes! Can you do that with me? That's what we did at our house. I want you to do that with me. The Lord's right arm is raised in triumph. Yes! He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you can pilot us when we have no clue. We fly like drunken ducks, and yet you love us. You're coaching us in, saying, I can help you land the plane if you will just listen to my instruction. Trust in my risen Son, and your life will be better. It's true, Lord, and we trust you. We not only profess the historic facts, but we possess Easter today, we thank you that you have called us to land the plane and that you too will show us how to do this. In your name we pray, amen. amen. I'd invite you to stand and boldly proclaim the Apostles' Creed. There's two parts in there that really fit Easter. I want you to think about them and shout them out today. There's a, there's a line in the second paragraph that talks about the resurrection of the dead, um, er, that Jesus is risen. Um, he rose from the dead and in the... Uh, Third paragraph, the third article, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Put a little emphasis on those, will you? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again, was dead, and he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Most of you might have in your bulletin a connection card that we encourage you to fill that out and let us know you're here. Or you could use that link that you see on the screen. It's just our way of staying connected with you, especially if you are here for the first time. Let us know your name and uh, how we can stay connected with you. You can also submit prayer requests on that card as well as the link. And uh, we just are so thankful that uh, uh, there are different ways that we can stay connected, and uh, we do. God bless you and your giving. Anointing in the sanctuary, there is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burdens you have carried, for in the sanctuary, God. Is here. There is a 
sweet anointing in the sanctuary there is a stillness in the atmosphere come and God is here in a very real way. And if you still have burdens that you, weighing you down, God is here. So as you come forward in this special moment, it's an opportunity for to lay down your burdens. You may say, all I have is my burdens. God is happy to receive them. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This is the blood of the new covenant that is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Would you please rise? After I pray each petition, I will say those words we have been saying all morning, Christ is risen, and I ask you to respond with each petition, he is risen indeed, alleluia. We thank you, Lord, for the precious, incredible gift that you have given to each and every one of us to hear today. Even when there were barriers in our way between our relationship and you, you came in love and made a way. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Even when we have our moments of doubts, maybe not in our salvation, but those moments of doubt in other areas of our life where we are waiting for you, we acknowledge Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Against all odds, you came to us. The God of the universe, the sovereign God who created the world, came to us and enabled us to experience Easter in us. Christ is risen. You hear our prayers. You answer our prayers. And we give you thanks this morning for all those answers that you have poured into our lives. We especially give you thanks for the birth of Hannah Grace and all those other answers to prayers. We pray for you to bring healing and intervention in the lives of Marty, and Lucy Schlotty, for Billy Hood, Lynette Hodges, Marilyn Roberts, Jean Rosentretter, Emma Mangles, Becky, Eric, Daniel, Karen, Christ is risen. And Lord, we give you thanks and we pray now that prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but from evil kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For just a second. Um, you know, we usually talk here about uh, some church programs that are ways to help you follow Jesus. I don't have a lot today in that regard. I do want to say this. Um, one of the best ways that you can follow Jesus is being in a regular fellowship and so come back and join us. It's good to have a full house today. Thank you for being here. Um, I, want to make a, I want you to repeat a date after me. May 19th. May 19th. All right. May 19th is the rededication of the sanctuary. Um, and we're going to have a special service time on that day. 10 a.m. Say 10 a.m. So put them together. May 19th, 10 a.m. All right. My wife teaches preschool, so I have now... Uh, <laughs> fulfilled the obligations that a preschool teacher would do in that regard. Um, we're going to have a special day that day. It's going to be awesome. Um, Will will be cranking on the organ. We're going to have a bunch of special music that day. And um, we are going to also have a church picnic kind of a thing. We're having the in and out food truck. Now, when I say food truck, you think of this little dinky thing with two people take back there and it takes like three hours. To, no, this is a food semi, Okay. <laughs> It really li literally is a food semi, and they bring about 15 workers, and it goes pretty fast. So In-N-Out Burgers is going to be our lunch that day. Um, if you want to bring a blanket, want to bring a place for kids to play on the playground, that'll be awesome. The date again is May 19th, 10 a.m. All right, you got it. Second, to help us cross the finish line on that, we've been doing a very kind of low-key fundraising thing. 
and we're getting really close. We're at about 86% of the goal. Um, so that leaves 14% left. Now, when we said goodbye to Jenna not too long ago, um, there was a custom-made cross that was built out of the pews that we recycled from the sanctuary. Joe Masterson was then asked to make 40 more of those. <laughs> and so these, um, starting next Sunday, will be part of our Closing the Gap project on our fundraising. And so if you are interested in one of these, um, we are suggesting a $250 donation. I know that's a lot, but it's a fundraiser for the sanctuary. So, um, but these are awesome. Custom made with love by Joe and Nancy. And they will even autograph them for you. <laughs> Actually, they have already. <laughs> yeah, let's say thanks to them. <laughs> Last thing I've got is um, if, you, if you need to take home some food, we have a bunch still in the fireside room. Um, there is some breakfasty kinds of stuff. We would like to get rid of it. So if y'all can uh, take some food with you, that would be awesome. Oh, one last, last thing. I said that was the last thing. This is the last, last thing. The last, last thing is this. A lot of times when church is over, we kind of flood up here and try and put all the chairs away and stuff. We're not going to do that today. There is going to be a crew that shows up tomorrow at 10 a.m. If you would like to be part of the cleanup crew that comes back tomorrow at 10 a.m., just show up. That would be awesome. For now, um, we're going to receive a blessing from the Lord um, We've said this many times today, but it's kind of the Easter litany. But when it comes to the congregation, he is risen, he is risen indeed. I want you to go like that. All right? He is risen, he is risen indeed. All right, stand up. Get your arms ready. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's sing.
If you uh, have a desire to um, be prayed with today, um, back in the far corner over there would be the space to do that. Secondly, if you um, purchased a lily, please take it home today. Thank you. Go in peace and serve the Lord.